that. Dolph Lundgren sent me that. I don't know if you can see that. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful frying pan. Uh, and he sent me a few little tips to go with it, one of which I acted on. I was out in my garden. My <laughs> garden. I was in the grounds. And um, <laughs> I saw a little squirrel, a little baby squirrel, uh, on, the, uh, on the patio like that. And I went, I went, what up? I like got the squirrel. And there it is, all ready to be cooked like that. <laughs> um, well, so you're supposed to put that hot water into them. And remember, they formed some kind of nourishing meal. <laughs> um, I was showing you uh, this program that I made, which is uh, one of the programs that I take very, very seriously, actually. It's a fella called uh, Billy Roberts, and he's, uh, he's a psychic. He's an uh, he's expert in the world of, uh, of um, the psychic. And the, uh, what he does is he, he's interviewing these people. The first bloke you can see is a fella called Les Driver. And they get possessed by other spirits, genuinely. They're not just like bad amateur dramatic type people who are trying to take us all for a sleazy ride. They are genuinely possessed by the spirits from another world. Les, would you feel comfortable demonstrating your trance mediumship? The people watching this program, I'm sure, would like to see it. I think we can agree with him there. The people watching this program would love to see you uh, be possessed by another spirit, Les. Well, I'm prepared to... To, to give it a go. Obviously, um, I, I wouldn't be in the same circumstances if I was doing this, perhaps. Can I just put, make one point here about Les? Uh, you can tell from his accent, he's probably uh, the first second rating Jewish uh, from the East End of London. All right? That's just something I've noticed about him, basically. But he's going to be possessed by a completely different well, spirit. In the church or, or, or a small circle. Um, but yes, I'm prepared to give it a go. Well, this is the room we've chosen for our demonstrations of trans mediumship. It's quiet and conducive. But obviously, we can't guarantee that something is going to happen. That's my back bedroom! I've made that in my back bedroom, those Persian rugs on the walls, bastards. All that we can do is keep the cameras rolling. I would ask you once again to watch very carefully and draw your own conclusions what you see. Right, there we go. Draw your own conclusions. Your name? Yes, my name is Cyrus. <laughs> was born. No, it's not a, a subject to laugh at. He's been possessed by another spirit. <laughs> All right, happens to be a Jewish person, obviously, from the East End of London, but that's beside the point, right? It is another person. Okay, One just shut up. Of Jewish parents, uh -huh. but in the land that you understand as Egypt. I was born in a place called Haifa. Good. And that place, Haifa, now belongs to the land of Israel. I formulated some questions which I feel the interested layperson would ask, um, if you wouldn't mind answering them for me. Now, what question would you want to ask him, basically? All right, you're from, like, the 17th, 18th century a Jewish person. Can you speak Hebrew, for a start, or can you only talk in that East London accent? <laughs> But he don't. He asks him some dopey question about, can you explain to us the way that the cosmos works or something? If you were to imagine the base of a fountain and the water contained within that base of a fountain, where you are perhaps a, just a molecule of that water, and if you were to imagine yourself being pulsated through the fountain, as you come... This is riveting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> this is fantastic. But I don't... Seriously, I'm, I'm like... You know, the whole nature of this is fun. But this is something I'm totally into. Right? Absolutely, totally into it. Because I do believe that certain places... Uh, I believe in all the spiritual, all the supernatural. Because certain places, for instance, have certain presence. Certain presence, right? I mean, uh, take this room, right? I've never liked... All not, I've never liked this room, OK? I'm always wary of coming in here by myself. Always have been, right? And it, it seems... It seems to be like worse now, basically, than it, than uh, than it was before. It's a it's a very strange strange room where kind of spiritual things can happen. Oh my God, that was fantastic! <laughs> Did you see that? Did you you didn't see what that glass was on that shelf over there? It was on the shelf by the pot noodle, and it flew across the room and it smashed there, right in the middle. Oh, that is oh. <sighs> Well, if you don't believe now, seriously, it's fa fantastic. Let's have a little bit more of uh, Silas. Into the atmosphere, each one... Speed it up, Silas, there's a good lad. ...is a droplet of water. Uh-huh. OK, right, uh, let's see if we can move on a bit. Pleasure speaking to you. I was wondering if you had any friends with you who would also like, like to speak to us. Yes, uh... The point we're trying to make, Silas, is there anyone that is slightly more interesting? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you give us anyone at all? We can arrange that. Good. But before 
before I leave you, I must remind mankind uh -huh. that they have a responsibility unto themselves. Yeah, you, is there anyone else? They that's have honest? a responsibility <laughs> to care for themselves. To respect themselves. So it's not just respect to the spiritual world, but I'm spooling you on just a little bit. Because you've been a little bit dull. We specifically asked if there's anyone else and there. This is where the service to God and mankind uh -huh. Uh -huh. lives. Mm, sure. In the sharing Is of there the anybody else there, Silas? This is an aspect of God with others. No, you are not perfect and you will make Silas, we've asked you nicely, don't make us hit you. <laughs> but it is learning from Is there any... Things. Right. You're taking a piss now, Silas. <laughs> of all mankind. Lovely. Thanks, Silas. Bye. Until we meet again. Right, bye. <laughs> For God's sake, Silas! All the people in the spirit world, we have to pick a boring old git like you. I mean, uh, um, a lot of uh, people, like old Jewish people, went into the entertainment business. Surely, is, is there no one? Is there no one like like that there? My old man uh, says, "Follow the band." Dilly dally on the way. Off in the van, no impact in it. I followed on with me old goblin. My dillies and dallies, dallies and my dillies. Lost me way and don't know where to go. You can't trust the specials like the old time coppers when you can't find your way home. Hello, me old cockney sparrow. Go. <laughs> Outside of a market stall in Walford, when was the last time you heard anyone say, Hello, me old cockney sparrow, how are you going? Ah. It's another one of Leslie's lies, basically. It's another one of his characters he's made up, right? All right, you're, uh, so we're taking it, you're, you're an, uh, an East Ender, uh, you're, you're a Jewish guy from the East End of London, all right, from, I guess, singing that song the latter part of the last century or the beginning of this century. We used to have some vices, you see. Mm -hmm. like I was talk talking about smoking, you know, and I used to like betting on the Gigi's and right. betting on the dogs. And right. sometimes I would go down to New Cross, and sometimes I would go down to Catford and watch the Gigi's, you know. Go to Catford to watch the Gigi's, would you? <laughs> Even though it's been a dog track since 1832. <laughs> well, you used to watch the Gigi's outside while your mate were betting on the dogs, did you? Okay. <laughs> Uh, and Billy now, even Billy, right, who set up this whole damn sham of a video, even Billy wants to try and catch him out now, look. I have a, a slight interest in horse racing. Uh, I said a slight interest, you understand. But today, well, over the last uh, 15, 20 years, one of the most successful jockeys was a, a man called Lester Piggott. Who was the, the most successful one in... in right. The most successful jockey today is Lester Piggott. If you're who you claim to be, who was the most successful jockey of your time? I don't know an awful lot about horse racing, but it's got to be Fred Archer, isn't it? Uh, that's the name that even I know, and I wasn't alive when he was alive. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you that, Billy, because, uh, again, I wasn't particularly interested in, 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 in the jockeys of the time. Now, if you'd ask me about Arsenal football, then I'll tell you about uh, uh, who I supported. Oh, really? So the research that you did before you came on to tell this huge lie on this video is about football, not horse racing. That's what you're saying. And surely Silas, having seen how boring Silas is, surely he was the Arsenal fan back there in the spirit world. <laughs> load of old... Well, I don't know. I don't know. There's certain things that you, you... I watched this video and I thought, it's all funny, it's all rubbish, we'll take the piss out of it. But then certain things happened that, that made me change my mind. But she's here, and she's trying to communicate some kind of information to me. So there must be a reason for that. But all in all, I've never really um, liked this room. And I'm always um, a little bit wary of coming into it by myself. And it seems to be worse than it was before when we used to come here. <laughs> oh my god! Back there's a glass smashed on the floor, and that glass was actually over there before. <laughs> and it fly off the, the, the mantle and it shot over there. I'm sorry about that, but. 
To be honest, it's never happened to me before, particularly in Wilton Hall. I don't know what it was because the glass seemed to fly. It was on the, the mantel and it shot across the room. It smashed. I know one of the producers was out of that door like nobody's business and terrified. I'll go and find him in a minute. But I, following me from that room is a, a strong odour. Yeah, that'll be bullshit, Billy. That's what that'll be. Saying. <laughs> Load of old cuds, that is. Listen, I'm sorry, again, I've, 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 you've overstayed your welcome with me, right, because I've got to go, because um, I'll tell you what I'll do, I've got to go to Stringfellas, and on the way, I promise I'd, uh, I'd go into the music machine in Camden, right, which ain't there anymore, they changed the name, but when I'm there, they change it back to the music machine, just to play the kind of music I like to hear. Walking on sunshine, whoa, see that broken glass that I broke early in the show. Don't bother me. When I was in the SS, we used to take our shoes off and walk across that. That's how hard I am. See you later. <laughs> Bob, I need to have a chat with you. There's quite a few problems with the top of the show. I'm a bit My worried about Bob the Silas. Liar. The casualty's I've not come the... from Bob, the land Bob, of Bob, please Egypt. stop mucking about. I know you're in there. I am Bob, I know the it's you. The casualty... Heart I don't like the casualty. We want to start again with a couple of the other sketches. They're not... Bob. Huh? Yeah, all that stuff you just said there. That were all cods Bob, I know it's you. Can you... Bob, so we've got so many problems. Way she knows. <laughs> what do you do that for, you that's, dope? That's amazing. I, it just flew off the mantelpiece. That's not happened to me before. 